Hello and welcome to our video on pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. Today we learn on how to use this powerful feature to analyze and summarize data. As per our tradition, we'll divide this video into the following parts. Part 1 is understanding pivot tables. Part 2 is using pivot tables. Part 3 is tips and tricks on using pivot tables. And part 4 would be limitations or challenges of pivot tables. This video might be long, but we have tried to include everything you need to master pivot table in as concise way as possible. In Excel, a pivot table is a fantastic tool for organizing and summarizing large amounts of data, and it makes it easier to find patterns amongst rows and rows of data. It allows you to quickly analyze and gain insights from your information. This is the simplest definition possible for pivot table. Now let's dive right in and see how it works. Here, I have a sample data set of sales information of our example company, which sells FMCG products across various regions. As you can see, each product category has certain product name, which is further classified into either volume, weight, or units, depending on the product. For example, product category baby care has baby diapers as product name but has four unique product codes depending on units ranging from 5 to 50 pieces. And we have another category drinks which has four different products and each of these products have a minimum of three product codes depending on volume. Needless to say, it's a lot of information to make sense of at a glance which is further complicated by the fact that all these products are being sold in four different zones, east, west, north, and south. That means every zone has all these product codes being sold, and this data here shows sales figures for each product code in every zone. And here you can see it fully. So many product codes with their respective product categories, names, zones, and sales. Just to make heads and tails of this data is a daunting task in itself, let alone gathering insightful information so as to make it work for you. And as I said earlier, pivot tables make finding patterns easier. You can clearly see just by working on this data alone, you can't ascertain anything. Now, say you are given this data and asked to find what is the total sales in units and amount for all product codes in all zones? What is the total sales for each zone? What is the total sales for each product category? What is the total sales in units for each product category? And lastly, just sort the data so it shows product name, then product code, then region, and then how many units sold and how much sales generated. Now the first objective is easy. Simply scroll to the bottom of your sheet and under the sales column, use the sum formula. If you don't know how to use sum formula, you can watch our video on sum formula, which explains it in enough detail for you to master it. You can find its link on top right and in the description of this video. Back to our remaining objectives. Now for objectives number two and three, one might think to use filters. Let's do that. Let's apply filters on our top row by using Control plus Shift plus L and select East in our region column. Now we have only data related to the East region. Now we can go at the end and use the sum formula just like we did for objective number one, like this, right? Wrong. You see, sum has a limitation. If you use sum here, it will ignore the filters and simply add everything in its range, which means here it will give you a total of everything, just like in our first objective. A better option here will be to use subtotal function, but that's a different video altogether. Here's where pivot tables come in handy. To create a pivot table from your data, you can either select your whole table or highlight one cell in your table and either use the keyboard shortcut Alt N V T or you can go to insert tab 
and click on pivot table which brings up this dialog box now let's quickly understand what we have here first option is the table or range which has to be summarized as a pivot table which is highlighted here by these moving dashes we can check by scrolling down that whole of our table is selected if not we can come here in this dialog box delete everything and click on this up arrow here then select the whole table including the headers right up to the very end make sure you select everything once you are done now click this down arrow and we have our table location here next option is whether we want it on a new sheet or the same sheet if we need it on the same sheet we can select existing sheet click on this up arrow highlight a cell to show excel where we want our pivot table and excel will create it there but it's advisable to create a pivot table in a new sheet so as you analyze it you can focus on the data presented by it and also since its layout changes depending on your requirement it may be restricted by your original data so for now we will choose new sheet here we have an empty pivot table ready to be filled on the right side we have a pivot table fields pane which allows us to drag and drop fields to define our pivot table we can also click on the fields to select them and i'll show whether to click or drag them later in this video under fields you can see it has all our headers from our original sales data so it's empirical to use proper headers so you can use them easily in pivot tables you can have duplicate headers in your data which will show with a number at the end in our fields box but that simply adds confusion so it's good practice to have clear unique headers in your data below the fields box we have four boxes filters columns rows values each of these have a specific purpose and you shall use them all or some in order to generate the data you need now let's work towards our objectives our first objective was to get total sales for all product codes in all zones for this we will simply bring sales to our values box the value box works with column which have numbers in them so we can have our quantities column and sales column here and it will give us our totals for both no use of sum or any other function for that matter now let's move on to our next objective to calculate total for each zone we can either clear our values box or we can leave the items here we leave them as it is for now and simply drag region to our rows box and excel magically divides our total into respective regions now we have zone wise total of all units and the revenue for our third objective we have to get the zones out and bring in the product category we can either drag the zones out or remove the check boxes against them in the pivot table fields box and that will remove them now let's drag product category in rows box and we shall have our total number of units and revenue against each product category and by simply leaving our quantity option in our values box on our first objective we have completed our fourth objective to get total for units in each product category now comes the last objective to sort the data in a given format with their respective totals we can use filters and advanced sorting options to do that but that won't give us the totals it will simply sort the data for us completing this objective is pretty easy with pivot tables just drag all the required fields under rows and then rearrange if required as per your requirement and here we have all the data we need to fulfill our objective so we have completed all our objectives in fairly easy and quick manner as compared to other options available to us now let me show you some tips on this pivot table we have generated tip one finding average maximum minimum etc let's have a look at the values column here it says sum of quantity and sum of sales if you click on either of them it gives you different options but we are interested in the last option 
value field settings. When we click on it, we are presented with different ways to present our data. Count, average, maximum, minimum, etc. These come in handy if you need to, for example, find average instead of sum total. Tip 2. Expanding and collapsing fields. As our current table is, it may be a bit overwhelming with all the fields shown. If you wish to kind of make it shorter without losing any data, simply click on this minus sign in front of this field and it collapses it. You can do it individually like this or right click on let's say baby diapers underscore 10 piece and go to expand, collapse and then choose collapse entire field. This will summarize just the product codes under each product category in your table and you can do the same with product categories which will neatly present your table with just the product names and their respective totals without losing the data and you needing to drag the fields again. Tip 3. Checking each field and its values. Let's say you need to check how did we reached our total for product code bread underscore 300 gram. Simply double click on this column here and Excel will create a new sheet with breakup on how has it calculated this number. This is particularly useful if you wish to double check your data that it has all the necessary columns. Tip 4. Changing the layout of the table. Let's say we don't want the region like this because it makes our table long and we have to scroll down to see every other region's numbers and it also makes comparing every region a bit difficult. You can move the region field from the rows box to the columns box and now you have all the regions side by side. Or maybe you want to just check the numbers from each zone and not the rest. You can simply drag the region to the filters box and then where it says all, click on this button here and it allows you to select one or more regions to choose from. This way you can just look at the region you are concerned with. Tip 5. Changing the design of the table. You can change the design of your table from this simple table to something else. Just go to design while highlighting any cell in your pivot table and it gives you many options to change how your table looks. You can remove the bold font from the row headers by unselecting row headers here or you can have Excel fill every alternate row with a color by choosing banded rows here which makes it a bit more presentable and easy to read. There are many more options to change the look and feel of your table but that would make this video too long. So I'll leave that for you to explore and share any other trick you find in the comments for other viewers and let's move to our last part of this video, limitations of pivot table. As we always say, nothing is perfect and pivot tables are no exception. Though being powerful, they have their limitations without nitpicking. Let's check some main limitations or challenges regarding pivot tables. Limitation number one, learning curve. I can't classify a pivot table into a beginner level. There's a bit of a learning curve involved in order to master this tool. Though with regular practice, just like everything else, you will be able to do wonders with your data, I'm sure. Limitation number two, they don't update automatically. As you are aware by now that pivot tables are linked with a table or range and are simply showing your original table in a more concise manner. If there is any changes in your original table, let's say we add a new product, at the end named temp and let's add the rest of the columns here to complete our details of this new product and if we go back we won't find our new product code there why because we had asked excel to create a table from a certain number of rows and columns to begin with and a new product is mentioned outside of those cells to fix this you can go to pivot table analyze tab and then select change data source. This will allow you to change the source of the pivot table and now let's remove any report filters and right click on our table to refresh and now we can see our new product. This inability to automatically update works both ways. If you delete something, it won't automatically gets removed from your pivot table. Let's say we remove this temp product we just created and go to our pivot table and we can still see it. It won't go away until you right click and choose to refresh. 
Limitation number three, your original data has to be well crafted. Remember, pivot tables are simply packaging your original data in an easy to understand way. So if your original data is not well crafted, which means all the cells are filled, numbers are formatted as numbers, you will get unexpected results. For example, let's just give it a blank cell to work with and see what happens. Let's clear everything and bring only product category into rows column and then go to our original table and delete our product category skincare from our last row. Now let's see what happens when we go back to our pivot table and refresh it. Before that, notice the total under skincare and as soon as we refresh it, it lowers the total of skincare and adds another line with blank as header and its respective totals. Imagine if it is more than one cell, your pivot table will clap them all under blank heading and your whole objective of understanding your data will be out the window. Though you can fix such cells by a simple method, double click on the values field and it will show you which fields need updating. But remember, you can't update them here. You'll have to go to your original table to fill the empty columns and then come back to your pivot table and refresh it in order to fix it. But even with these limitations, pivot table are a fantastic way to summarize and analyze data in Excel. With just a few simple steps, you can transform overwhelming amounts of information into meaningful insights. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Start exploring pivot tables in Excel and unlock the power of your data. With this, we come to the end of our video. If you liked it, Please like and share our video and share your ideas for our future videos in comments. We have many ideas for our future videos, but it will be best if we know what you want help with. Makes our job a lot easier. Thanks for watching.